What better place for a Bon Voyage party than Las Vegas? And for USA Basketball, it's the last game on American soil before taking off for China, where Kobe Bryant and the U.S. will be looking to win Olympic gold for the first time in eight years. And we welcome you to the Thomas and Max Center here on the campus of UNLV, home to the running Rebels inside of the 2008 State Farm USA Basketball Challenge between USA and Canada. And we welcome you inside. Hello again, basketball fans. Rick Hamill and the coach, Fran Fraschilla. And Fran, there has been a long drought for USA basketball in terms of major competitions. The last three, they've come up empty. It is the longest gold medal drought in the history of USA basketball. Uh, that's why Jerry Colangelo and Mike Krzyzewski asked for a three-year commitment from some of the NBA stars. And tonight begins the home stretch, if you will, of what a lot of these players talk about, the road to redemption. Call it the redeem team because they've embraced that moniker. And you look at the finishes there, Spain has done a lot better job in those last three competitions than the United States of America, and that is, in fact, weird. The Chevy keys to the game, Fran, you're up. Well, you mentioned Spain and some of the other really quality teams in, in international play. They have great team chemistry, and being together now over 100 days, Team USA, hopefully they'll have that chemistry. Pressure defense, an important staple of this club, and once they get to Beijing, outside shooting will be a key because because they will see a variety of zone defenses. And that pressure defense led, obviously, by Kobe Bryant. Uh, he is just a lockdown defender in the NBA, but especially over here with the two guards, typically not up to snuff in terms of Kobe Bryant's high standards. The State Farm starting lineups look like this for Canada, Jermaine Anderson and Rowan Barrett there in the backcourt. The center is Joel Anthony, he of the Miami Heat, and he played his college ball here at UNLV. Olufama Timmy, he has D-League experience. He's at one of the forwards, and a man you know well from Pitt, LeVon Kendall, at the power forward position. For the United States of America, you saw the starting lineup, and you know it well. It's Jason Kidd and Kobe Bryant in the backcourt. You've got Carmelo Anthony, Dwayne Wade, and also Dwight Howard. LeBron James will not be here for this game as you take a look at head coach Mike Krzyzewski and his staff. LeBron landed on the foot of Kevin Durant at Tuesday's practice and it's a sprained right ankle. They're considering it mild and LeBron said when asked if he could play against Canada, right now it's probably a no just for precautionary reasons, but I will be ready once we hit the road. Now there's no question that if he needed to play today, he certainly would, but the depth of this USA team and the fact that it's the opening exhibition game, no reason to really risk him. And Coach Kate, a superlative career, obviously. Fran, he's already a Hall of Famer. He went into the Hall of Fame back in 2001. 803 victories in the NCAA. That is sixth most all time. He's averaged 26 wins per season at Duke. And sort of an out of the box selection. A lot of people thought that Jerry Colangelo would go with the NBA coach, but as Coach K said, He's got no agenda. He's not coaching the Phoenix Suns, not coaching the New York Knicks. He's coaching Team USA, and this team has embraced him. The Stars have really enjoyed playing for Mike Krzyzewski. So here it is. The Stars are out. You look around, you see Hall of Famers everywhere. You see celebrities everywhere. The officials, Bill Kennedy from the United States, Nikos Zablanos from Greece, and Steven Siebel from Canada. Canada in black, the United States in white. We are ready for the tip. It is Anthony against Howard, and it is won by Dwight Howard. Here is Jason Kidd. Fran, you brought up this stat off the air. It's fantastic. The guy took 10 shots at 10 games at the Tournament of the Americas here in Vegas last year. First shot of the game missed by the first recruit by Jerry Colangelo for this team, Carmelo Anthony. Oh, that's right. Remember, Jason Kidd, 38-0 in international competition. And while he's the oldest member of this team, he will provide great leadership for this club as well. Almost an early turnover from Olu Famatimi. Here is Joel Anthony spinning, going back and hitting that lefty shot over Dwight Howard. Rookie last year with Miami, played well. He's back on the team this year. Should figure into their plans big time. And there's a strong move to the hoop by Kobe Bryant, and the USA is on the board. Now the key for Team USA will be great ball movement throughout this Olympic experience. Last year in the Tournament of Americas, 68% of their field goals were assisted. Joel Anthony, now one of two. Dwayne Wade, clean shaven on the skull, pulls up for three. 
got the hop. Well, you mentioned the three, and keep in mind that international line much shorter than the NBA line. It's actually been an adjustment, Rick, because it's a it's a shot that they're going to get. They're going to get a lot of open looks in the in the in the tournament. At the World Championship in 2006, Wade shot 44% from three-point range. Rowan Barron misses that shot. Kid back for the United States up on Amello, and he steps out of bounds. Jason Kidd is the leader of this team. Everybody says that. You know, you think maybe Mello, he's been here from the beginning, and maybe Kobe Bryant. A lot of people think he's the best player in the world, but it's that man, Jason Kidd. Well, Jason Kidd played about 22 minutes a game last year in the Tournament of Americas. I don't know if he's going to play a ton of minutes because of the development of Deron Williams and also Chris Paul, but his leadership will be important. Jermaine Anderson. Now he's guarded by Dwight Howard. Have fun with that. He actually does have fun with that. Scoops it up and in. What a move by Jermaine Anderson. And the little guard who played his basketball at Fordham University in New York. All five of these Team Canada players played at American colleges. Jermaine Anderson from Toronto. Still plenty of time on the shot clock. Kobe Bryant. And the bucket goes for Kobe. United States leads 7-4. Olufama Timmy working against Wade. Anderson to Levon Kendall. Good ball movement for Canada. Anthony underneath. That shot is blocked by Howard. And beating the shot clock for the bucket is Olu Mamatimi and Canada within one. Well, Canada has just come off a, a not qualifying for the Olympics in Greece. Foul on Mamatimi. Dwayne Wade will go to the free throw line. And look at some of the rule differences between FIBA play and the NBA. A FIBA rule play is very, it's, it's, it's a combination of what we would see in college basketball in terms of 40 minute game, the shorter three point line, only four, excuse me, five team fouls. And remember now, the court is shorter, and you can also knock that ball off of the rim if it's hanging up around there. Something you can't do in the NBA or in college basketball. Coach K on Dwayne Wade, he said he's been the most pleasant surprise this week in practice because you didn't know what to expect because he was out the last portion of the season. And Coach K added that he was not healthy when he played in 2006 at the World Championship. And he had surgery on his left shoulder and left knee back on May 15th of 2007. And everybody says Wade looks great. He looks great out here to me, Fran. No, he did. He was terrific in practice this week. Part of that versatile perimeter game. He can guard two or three spots. Howard hammers Joel Anthony. And Joel Anthony has that look early on. And Rick, this game will not stay close. Team USA will pull away from Canada, but remember, the, this Canadian team has been together now for at least a month as they did try to qualify. They did not get the job done, but there is some cohesiveness here. And for those of you who follow international basketball, you may be saying, hey, where's Samuel D'Alembert? He is not with the team, essentially booted off of the team. And Leo Routens, the head coach of Canada, now involved in a controversial situation. Uh, but Samuel Dalver was the best big and the best player on this Canadian team. Now it is Joel Anthony who just missed that free throw. Uh, Leo Routens, the youngest player to ever play on the Canadian national team. Of course, played at Syracuse and then in the NBA. Carmelo fouled by Levon Kendall. And we'll have a look at the mellow man at the line. You know, I've said this, Rick. Carmelo Anthony, to me, is Team USA's best international player because he has the versatility to take bigs away from the basket, shoot the three effortlessly, but he can also put it on the floor and post up smaller perimeter players. He led USA basketball with 21.2 points per game in just 19.4 minutes at the Tournament of the Americas last year here in Vegas when the United States qualified for the Olympics in Beijing. Game one for the USA is August 10th against the host country, China. And this is the first of five tune-ups for the United States basketball team. All will be seen here, this one on ESPN, the next four on ESPN2. Joel Anthony drives on Howard, can't score. Kid down there for the board, but it squeezes out of his hands and into the hands of Famu Timmy. 
A wild looking shot goes over the backboard and to the United States. We're doubling up Canada right now, 12 6. Famo Timi, a young guy that played at Arkansas, now plays in the Ukraine, starting to really develop into a fine European player. And Dwayne Wade appears to be wet here early on. He's off to a fantastic start. Eight points, two of two from the floor, three of three from the free throw line. And when LeBron comes back, he will be Team USA's sixth man. Rowan Barrett nails it. 35 years young, 6'5", 210. Played his college ball at St. John's. And a good save there by Kendall, but in to Kidd. Over to Kobe. Now, why would he pass up that shot, Fran? Who's that, Jason Kidd? No, Kobe, Kobe right there. You know what? I think it's because they just want to get in the flow of the game. You know, Kobe mentioned... It's not about Kobe getting off. Yeah, it's about yeah. the flow, right? It, okay? it is. He had all day to shoot that one. You know, the biggest adjustment Kobe said he had to make last year in the tournament of the Americas is he doesn't get a chance to shoot this many open shots in, in international play because uh, teams will back off of him and force him to shoot the long ball rather than give him a drive for the hoop. And, Fran, how about this? You know, there's this purported point guard battle for the backup spot behind Kidd between Chris Paul and Darren Williams. They are in the game together and an attempt for the alley up to Dwight Howard. Kobe Bryant moves to the three, and you've got a two-point guard look for USA. The experimentation is on. Well, they did this a lot in practice this week, and I think uh, it gives Mike Krzyzewski more options. And uh, he will coach this team, at least early on, in waves. By that, I mean... You'll see three and four and five guys go to the scores table and sub in. And speaking of subs, we will see Chris Bosch. He will Chris enter the game for Dwight Howard. That foul a moment ago was on Rowan Barrett. You know, Chris Bosch, a member of the 2006 World Championship team, did not play last year. Chris Paul, much stronger than I think he was. There you go. Okay. First alley oop of the game. There's Shao. be several. Paul Tomello. Chris Paul really, I think, was taken back by the physicalness of international basketball back at the World Championships, but he has really uh, gotten stronger. Wouldn't you say the best alley-oop tosser in the NBA? Well, ask Tyson Chandler, right? Well, they were the top alley-oop combo last year. Rowan Barrett hits again. Up ahead to Kobe Bryant. He does track it down. Andre Miller's pretty good at the lob in Philadelphia, but I don't know if he's better than Chris Paul, Carmelo. Nothing doing. Jermaine Anderson pulls for Canada, and they cross the timeline down four. Darren Williams sporting a new beard, dogging Anderson. And a foul on Carmelo Anthony. Ooh, we got a traveling call on Rowan Barrett. Melo, my bad. So Barrett turns it over. And we step away, 71% from the floor for USA, 46 for Canada. And as we leave you, Canada, er, Canada trails by four. We'll be right back. ESPN's presentation of USA Basketball, brought to you by Sprite with Lyman and the Nike Hyper Dunk. Welcome back to fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada. 428 to go in the first quarter. The United States 16, Canada 12. Team USA's road to Beijing continues Thursday, July 31st as the red, white, and blue take on Turkey. Then on Friday, August 1st, Team USA will face Lithuania. Both games at 8 a.m. Eastern live on ESPN2. The coach and I will be calling those games proudly. And... Uh, an unusual time of day, but, but nothing that we can't handle, Fran. Nothing we can't handle. Basketball in the morning with breakfast. Lithuania will be in Group A. Team USA actually in a pretty tough Group B. Pretty good defense right yep. there on Golden, but Carmelo cleans up the mess. And that's what makes Carmelo so dangerous. When you talk about the prototypical international power forward, that's right. He'll play a lot of power forward for Team USA. He has that ability to score inside and out. Jermaine Anderson hits again. And they're giving him three. This is three scrappy, five yeah. from deep for Canada early on. Oh, Bosch just took it away from Kendall. Says, I'm an NBA baller. You're not. Give me that. Here's Chris Paul. Uh. One thing that really impressed me this week at practice was Chris Paul's ability to knock down that long shot. You know how good he is at getting into the lane and creating havoc. 
Chris Paul increased the three-point shooting big time last year. Got it up to 37%. That's respectable. And might creep over 40 before his career is over. Just keeps getting better year after year. Anderson into the corner. And another three-pointer from Canada. It's Lalo Timmy. They're four of six from downtown in Canada within three of the United States. Early in the week, I watched the select team of young NBA players really cause this team some problems in their scrimmages. So we talk about the world catching up. You get a little taste of it right now. Carmelo retrieves it. Now he's triple team. Two on the shot clock. Kobe from L.A. And he makes it in. Oh! for school. Uh, I told you, Rick, that that international line is a little too short for Kobe. This time he just stepped back, recognized the shot clock, and banked it in. Look at Kobe Bryant, the reigning MVP in the NBA, two-time scoring champion, and he dazzles the crowd here in Vegas with a shot from the hash mark. Incredible. Chris Paul, no look, and he hangs, and it's dunked down in by Chris Bosh. Might have been on the cylinder, but that can happen here in international play. We're playing with FIBA rules here. That's exactly right. It's something that Team USA, because a lot of these guys have been together for three years, the FIBA rules are starting to come, become a little more natural to them. Almost a turnover from Canada, tracked down by Jermaine Anderson. Jesse Young into the game, trying to set a screen right there. Out of bounds off of USA. Three on the shot clock for Canada. Other substitutions for Canada, Carl English. He has the schnazzy do down here in the corner. And Rance Brempong. Jesse Young, he's a big, he's going to have to hoist. Gets it off. And a foul is called by Bill Kennedy on Chris Bosch. Jesse Young bailed out. Jesse Young from George Mason now plays in Spain. Very smart veteran player. He recognized the shot clock was going down and a little head fake. Take a look right here. Not a lot of contact. And Bosch actually tries to step away from him, but Bill Kennedy, a veteran of NBA and FIBA basketball. Jesse Young played well at the Tournament of the Americas last year. 7.6 PPG for this Canadian team. Plays for a Estudiant in Spain currently. And checking into the game during that free throw scenario for Young is the son of Canadian head coach Leo Routens, Andy Routens, who played his, plays his college ball at Syracuse. And you want to talk about unlucky. <laughs> Tell him the story about his knee injury last year. Well, I know he got hurt in the game versus Brazil, and obviously that cost... Uh, that cost him a whole year at Syracuse. Three free throws there for Jesse Young. Two minutes into the first game, Canada <laughs> played. The dude tore his left ACL. Chris Paul draws the foul on Jermaine Anderson. It does not get any more unlucky than that. And Las Vegas is not a good place to be unlucky. And ironically, his college coach is on the Team USA bench right now, Jim Beheim. And Beheim coached Leo. Yes, he did. How about that? <laughs> well, when you think of Canadian basketball, I go back to Jack Dunney, the, the New Yorker who coached Lou Alcindor at Powell Memorial High School, then on the Holy Cross, and really is the father of modern Canadian basketball. Leo Routon certainly uh, one of his uh, pupils. In fact, Jack Dunney, you put Leo Routon's on that national team as a 16-year-old player. Leo Routon's getting a taste of uh, the heat of coaching because he's come under fire in the last uh, year or so. He's the broadcaster for the Toronto Raptors now. Does a great job with them. And his contract is up with the Canadian national team. And Jesse Young dribbles it out of bounds. I I'm, hoping, I'm, I'm hoping Leo, you know, that it works out for him. But, you know, this controversy, you never know the direction that they want to go. But Leo's done a great job with this team. They do not have the talent that the other international teams have, yet they compete. Well, and I could have told him to stay off the coaching sideline and stay in the, uh, in the broadcasting booth. He <laughs> well, never asked the, me. But he's got the best of both worlds. Yes, you know, he he's does. a broadcaster. He dabbles with international coaching in the summer. Not a bad setup. Here's Andy Routens. Good to see him back. He actually played in the qualifying tournament about a week ago when Canada, when their Olympic dreams were dashed. And here is Darren Williams. Michael Red into the game. And he promptly nails a three. Michael Red has been scorching in practice the last couple of days, and he continues it here in the game. Well, this is a guy that will take on greater significance as they get to Beijing because 
you will see from teams like Spain and Lithuania a lot of zone defense. English, yes, Carl English. And a whistle after the play, a foul. Carl English is a guy that played his college ball at Hawaii, has been in some NBA training camps, now playing overseas. One of those guys that uh, gets very close at times to making a roster, but is now making a good living in Europe. Speaking of the good living in Europe, how about Josh Childress? Whoa. Taking on a, a three-year, $20 million deal in Olympiacos in Greece. More on that in one second. There's a backcourt foul on Chris Bosch, thus another possession here for Canada. And, and Fran, they are loving the 20-foot, 6-inch three-point line here with the FIBA rules. Four of six for the U.S., five of eight for Canada. They are drilling it from downtown. Bosch will have a seat. And the, Ch the Childress signing is sending shockwaves through the NBA. There is no question about it. And a lot of GMs in the NBA are afraid that the floodgates are going to open up. And that restricted tag that they have, which makes it so tough for players to defect to other teams. Well, the, the, English, the, the European teams don't have to worry about that restricted tag. Oh, you're exactly right. And the value of the dollar now compared to the euro is at an all-time low. So he will make $20 million tax-free wow. for three seasons in the Greek League and then play in the Euro League as well. Whoa. English is a streaky shooter, and he shot that one out the side of the backboard. Williams to Paul. I like this look. And if it's if, if it's successful here in the exhibition games, you're going to see it in Beijing. Uh-oh. Not so successful right there. Wires crossed between the two point guards and very good friends. And there's a good example. English was able to use his body. The international game, Rick, is more physical than the NBA game. No hand checking in the NBA, but you can get away with a lot of body, especially on the perimeter in the international game. This is Tyler Kepke. And he misses the shot. Rebound to Booz. Chris Paul back for USA, off to Williams. Underneath to Boozer. No dice. Traveling violation on the United States of America. And Williams and Boozer are the only teammates NBA style on this USA team. It's funny, Darren Williams looking at Bill Kennedy and saying, what did I do? But when you get ready for fever basketball, there's going to be three or four calls every game. And you're going to be looking at each other, wondering what the referee called. Kepke ends the first quarter with a miss from three. So 10 minutes down, the United States 30, Canada 24. Are you having fun with us from Las Vegas? I hope so. We're coming right back. As we start the second quarter, the United States leads by six. Kobe Bryant with seven points. Dwayne Wade, the leading scorer for the United States and in the game with eight. And Rowan Barrett leads Canada with six. 27 of the 54 points scored in this game off of three pointers. Zero fast break points through the first quarter. Rick Hamler, Fran Fraschilla on the mic for ESPN. Kobe Bryant with an emphatic defensive play. And here is Michael Red, and he is fouled by Carl English. Very interesting because there was a switch out on the ball screen. Kobe posted by the bigger Jesse Young, and that's something that's going to happen in international play. That time, good, solid defense. But you see Michael Red taken off to the races. English gets a piece, and he'll shoot a pair. With all due respect to Michael Red, who's a fantastic player and an even better human being, English isn't afraid of getting dunked on right there. He knows Red's just going in for the lay, and I'm going to put a body on him and make him earn him at the stripe. But Oh, yeah, Michael Red never misses free throws, so. Well, you look at Canada so far, and they have not been intimidated, and I'm looking at uh, a guy like Tyler Kepke, who's now out of the lineup. He plays at the University of Utah, so to get an opportunity to play against Jason Kidd, Andy Routens as well, still a collegiate player. Michael Red was 9 of 9 for the entire Tournament of the Americas from the free throw line, and he misses one here. English off. And Joel Anthony underneath for the rebound. And that is doing work when you're underneath with Carmelo Anthony and Carlos Boozer. And you come away with the rip and the foul. Joel Anthony looks like a nice young player for the Miami Heat. Well, as you know, I think he played in the last 24 games of the season. Really got a, a, an opportunity to show what he can do. Double-double figure rebound games at that time. Had a six-block game. 
late in the season. He was the Mountain West Defensive Player of the Year in helping UNLV make the Sweet 16 back in 06 07. Had a nice ovation from the crowd here before the game. English going nowhere on Kobe Bryant. Misses that shot, crashes glass, and English will be called for the over the back foul. That's his second. You know, Rick, when you talk about the egos of this team and how they'll all play so well together, Kobe Bryant last year in the Tournament of the Americas went to Mike Krzyzewski a number of times and said, I want to guard the other team's best perimeter player. You look at Dwayne Wade will be the sixth man. Wade, they call him Flash. Uh, sometimes it's AKA Crash, the way he throws himself into bodies and at the rim. And Right there, the foul on D. Wade. Good rotation right there by Canada. Joel Anthony making another play. I really think LeBron over the last three years has been the team's best all-around playmaker. Jermaine Anderson way off, saved, but into Jesse Young. He is fouled by Carmelo Anthony. And for Melo, that is his first. Well, this is a good, solid test so far. Canada not backing down. Jesse Young with a lot of international experience. And Fran, here's what is ahead of us and Team USA and everybody around the world who wants to watch the United States get ready for the Beijing Olympics. Turkey. Russia. And then you've got Lithuania, yep. Russia, and also Australia. All those games on ESPN2. The first two from Macau. And the second two from Shanghai. Then it's on to Beijing for the real deal. I mentioned that Group B, very difficult Group B with Spain, Greece, and Germany with Kurt Nowitzki in Group B. Foul called in the lane. I got a chance to see Greece last week, Rick, and they may be the best team in the world. When I say team, not the team that's going to win the gold medal, but the team that plays the best together. Team that beat Team USA back in 2006. Many of the same parts still there. They beat the United States 101 to 95. Shot 63% from the field. And I know is Carlos Boozer's at the line. And I know Greece is good. I'm not sleeping on them at all. But that was a Villanova versus Georgetown type of effort to shoot 63% for an entire basketball game. They start the second half shooting 10 of 10. And to me, I think I think Greece is, is a major factor coming into these Olympics, but I don't think the United States is going to get beat back to back by Greece. Well, what happened, I think, two years ago, if you remember, Team USA, very conscious of how good Argentina and Spain were with the NBA players. Greece had one little known NBA player on that roster. And I think Mike Krzyzewski will admit that they didn't have the respect. Here's Kobe. Ooh, rocks the rim here in Vegas. Talked about defensive stopper. Now, you remember earlier, English tried to shake and bake him. Kobe took on the challenge, and he just shoves English out of bounds, just sending a little message. Six-time all-defensive first team for Kobe Bryant. Good rebound by Young, knocked away by Kidd. It's retrieved and put down by Tyler Kempkin. Another backcourt whistle. <laughs> Fred, we'll get back to your projected one, two, and three in the Olympics here in a second. Take a look at this defense right there. And you see how Kobe was able to use the body. There's really no such thing as hand checking in feeble play. You can really be physical out front. And there's a good example right there. Kobe Bryant adjusting to what the way the game is played internationally. Of course, you think of Kobe and you think of his dad, Jelly Bean Joe Bryan, who played for many years in Italy where Kobe was born. Foul was called on Howard, giving it back to Canada, but now a five-second violation will give it back to the United States. Six turnovers now for Canada, eight for the United States. And USA leads 35-27, 7.51 to go in the first half. Little 2-3 zone right here. Good, good close by Jesse Young. Forced Wade to eat it. Wade gets it back, and Wade goes up, and he rises and shines. Well, they will see some zone. That's not the type of uh, aggressive defense I think they'll see once they get to Beijing, but a different look by Leo Routens. They spent all of one practice this week, Rick, working on the zone. They brought Don Casey in, the legendary assistant coach, Coach of Temple, a zone master. Jim Beheim as well. Shot clock was at one. Barrett had to force it in the hands of Kidd. He's got Howard to his right. 
Shovels to Kobe. Tried to thread the needle to Howard. And it's taken by Jesse Young, who was fouled from behind by Kobe Bryant. That was a frustration foul if ever I've seen one. And I really like what I've seen out here from Jesse Young and Joel Anthony. They have not been intimidated at all. Well, Joel Anthony, as you mentioned, playing for the Miami Heat, so he knows these guys. But a guy like Jesse Young, the, the thing that people under, have to understand, he plays at a level in Europe where he's used to maybe not this type of uh, star talent on the floor, but he's been in big games in crucial situations in Spain. So this is really not an anomaly to him, nor is it to many of the international players who are now on the scene, both in the NBA and in the Euro League. Jesse Young now five points and two rebounds. He's five of seven from the free throw line. Canada within nine. You see the zone now, little two, three. Howard gets the shoulder in on Anthony, and the lefty hook goes. When you attack zones, people talk about the USA shooting. You must attack the zone from the inside out, not the outside in. And there's a good example right there. They got the ball deep to Howard in the lane. Turnover is an issue for the United States. They have nine, but the shooting has been spectacular, 77%. Speaking of turnovers, one by Canada. Kid to Kobe, underneath. And Wade almost missed it, but put it in, and Dwayne Wade having a superb first half 12 points and get this he hasn't missed a shot d wade i'm feeling you bro four of four from the field three of three from the free throw line and canada wants time united states leads 41 28 over canada and it's been the perimeter players getting it done kobe bryant dwayne wade combining for 21 points here in las vegas Welcome back to Las Vegas. I told you the stars were out. A couple of the richest men in the world. Warren Buffett to the left, Bill Gates to the right. They are guests of LeBron James. And I wonder what goal LeBron has placed higher. Becoming a billionaire, winning a gold medal, or winning an NBA championship. But that's the kind of company that LeBron James keeps. And it's great to have them here at the Thomas and Mack Center here in Las Vegas for the 2008 State Farm USA Basketball Challenge. I Rick wanna... Hamlet, Brian Frischilla <laughs> on the call, and there is LeBron. He is out with a sprained ankle. Not a big deal. He'll be ready to go uh, when this team hits the ground in China. Well, they had dinner last night, and I wonder who picked up the check, which one of the uh, billionaires and the soon-to-be billionaire. But uh, LeBron can play, obviously. This is a mild sprain, but the uh, precautionary measure just keeping him out. Team Got USA, 29 of 41 points scored by the backcourt. Got a chance to work with LeBron's camp a few weeks ago and talking to him. He's he's listed in the USA roster as 240, but he says he's 260 right now. And it's all muscle, 5% body fat. Of course it's all muscle. Kobe to Wade, out to Paul. And the Wade took the bump, no foul. We're mentioning they let him play in oh, the national yeah. play, and LeBron Kendall looked to a bit of foul right there, but they let him play on, and it's cashed oh. in by Olu Famatini for three. And Kendall, who played his basketball as, at Pitt, as you uh, mentioned earlier. These guys are very accustomed to international play, fever rules, physical play. And if anything, right now, take a look. You see Kendall just wall off Wade and a good no call. And then Famu Timi, a young man who played at Arkansas, who really is developing. He had a really good year in the Ukraine. I know, Rick, not a lot of people keep up with Ukraine basketball, but he's a guy that'll move up in the European structure and maybe even get a chance to come back and play in the NBA. That was a two, not a three, by Olu Famu Timi. Carmelo, jab steps on Kendall, shoots it right in his eye. Now you mentioned jab step. Carmelo Anthony is one of the most fundamental players in the world. You talk about old school. He does everything fundamentally sound on the floor and has a terrific stroke. Rowan Barrett. Tapped up by Anthony, taken by Wade, up ahead to Carmelo. Oh, and it's a mellow mash. Carmelo Anthony now into double figures. He has 10 points on four of six and the largest lead for the United States. 45-30, under five minutes to go in the first half. And a block on Dwight Howard and a foul. Rowan Barrett draws it. Foul number two on D. Howitzer. An example right there. Melo scoring from the perimeter and then getting out in transition and getting an easy one. 
Points in the paint, heavy advantage for the U.S., 18 to 4. We do have fast break points, though, I'm happy to tell you. Four for the U.S., two for Canada. Rowan Barrett at the stripe. He's played for the Canadian national team since 1998. Played over 100 games, I believe, and I just missed coaching Rowan by one year at St. John's where he played for Brian Mahoney, a very good Big East player, and one of those guys that's made a very good living playing, uh, playing in Europe and getting a chance to represent his country one more time. There's only so many jobs in the NBA, and if you can't play there, well, cross the Atlantic and go make that cash. Under 10 on the shot clock, here's Wade. Back to Carmelo. Hit the heel. Kept alive by Howard in the hands of Robbins. And out of bounds off of Canada. Turnover number eight. The U.S. had turned those into 11 points and potentially counting. Here's Chris Paul. Number two in MVP voting last year. Tamello. That was a thunderous jam by Carmelo Anthony. And how about this one? Last player to lead the NBA in assistant steals in the same year. Chris Paul did it this year. John Stockton back in 1992. And I saw John coaching his son this week here in Las Vegas. A lot of high school tournaments going on. Traveling ball on Jesse Young. And speaking of milestones for Chris Paul as Darren Williams and Michael Redcheck back into the game. First player in the history of the NBA to go for at least 30 points and 10 assists in his first two playoff games. That's unbelievable. Well, the maturity of Chris Paul really has, has struck me. And we mentioned the fact that he was the point guard, started six of the nine games in the World Championships two years ago, and he was a very young player. And he's really adjusted, I think, to the physical play of international basketball to be that much more prepared. Paul actually set a record in that tournament. He commits the foul right here on Kendall. 44 assists for Chris Paul, the most ever for a United States player at a world championship. And obviously didn't play at the Tournament of the Americas because of an injury, but they are happy to have that dude back. And it's interesting because for all the talk of Jason Kidd being a great team leader, which he is, and I mentioned that he only took one shot a game last year in the Tournament of America. It's important that at times you have a scoring point guard on the floor in international play, Rick, because otherwise you're going to see zones and you're going to see some people really back off J-Kid. So Mike Krzyzewski has the luxury of being able to go with Darren Williams and Chris Paul, two guys who not only are point guards but also can put points on the board. Tayshaun Prince into the game wearing number 14 in white. Chris Paul, Darren Williams. Pretty good defense right there by Routens, but he does commit the foul on D. Will. And Chris Bosch back into the game for USA. Dwight Howard will have a seat. Andy Routens and uh, Eric Devendorf will be back from injury for Jimmy Beheim. So Syracuse Orange men looking up. That was Routens' first foul. Michael Red into Williams. And Speaking of rich guys like Gates and Buffett and LeBron, this guy just became a whole lot richer from the Utah Jazz. Derrick Williams just signed a hefty extension, and boy, is he deserving of that. And Chris Paul right there with him, right? Two, two long-term extensions. Are they joined at the hip? I mean, it's like <laughs> they they're dra be. drafted, you know, three and four. Uh, uh, they're going to be in competition for all-star uh, uh, spots throughout their career. They're in competition for the backup spot to Jason Kidd. They both just signed long-term contracts. And USA Basketball, happy to have Chris Paul and Darren Williams, tremendous human beings and great basketball players. The United States leads by 16 here in their first of five exhibitions. We return to Las Vegas in a moment. <laughs> USA Basketball. Leads 49-33. Chuck Daly, the head coach of the Dream Team back in 1992 when USA took gold in Barcelona. Chuck Daly, the coach of that team. Obviously the coach of those champion Detroit Piston teams back in the day, the bad boys. And the United States, 28-1 in an exhibition play since 1992 when they started using pro players with Chuck Daly. Their only loss back on August 3rd of 2004 against Italy. That's right. Remember that game, the little Italian guards uh, 
quick players. It's interesting. It's at Italy now building up. They're going to have a good young national team of Bellinelli and Gallinari, and Bargnani. Look for them four and eight years out. Michael Red. Look oh, for that man. guy. This guy is dead eye. There is no doubt about it. Shot 45% from three at the Tournament of the Americas last year. Did not have a the, the, the typically high standard season that he has. Shot just 36% from three-point range during this past NBA season. Barrett the miss, tapped up and in by LeVon Kendall. But a premium placed on shooting by Colangelo and Krzyzewski and everybody involved with USA Basketball, and Red was an obvious choice. Well, they did shoot as a team 47% last year in that Tournament of Americas. Carmelo Anthony outstanding from the international line. See if there's anything going on right now. There's almost too much unselfishness by Team USA. A lot of the turnovers in this first half caused by guys who are supposed to be big time scorers trying to make the unselfish play that time you see Williams get all the way to the 10 and actually gets fouled should have gone up with the shot and he will shoot the free throw Gary Williams, go to the line. You the Gary Williams at the stripe a good look at his new beard not as thick as Baron Davis's famous beard but both of these guys have become a lot healthier in the bank account this summer. Barrett signing a huge deal to go to the Los Angeles Clippers. That hack to Darren Williams' face was courtesy of Rowan Barrett. And D. Will says, thank you very much. I'll take the free throws. United States up 54-35. Working on a little full court pressure right now. A lot of versatility on the floor right now. Team USA has a number of guys. You know, you look at Wade, Prince, Bosch, that can guard three and four positions on the floor. And an offensive foul called on Famu Timmy. That is his second. There was some concern, Rick, about the fact that Team USA doesn't have enough size, and you see Paul steps in very nicely. Mm -hmm. But I really think the way the international game is played, it's played from the outside in, unlike NBA and college where you try to get the ball into the lane. So you've got to have guys like Prince that can really defend three and four spots. Bosch can do it. Obviously, D. Wade. LeBron James, so I think the way this team is constructed, minus a major injury, is going to be fine because you really have to defend the perimeter. It's interesting, and a foul there on LeBron Kendall. No seven-footers on the United States roster. Dwight Howard, the biggest at 6'11", but as you've mentioned, it is people that know international basketball know you can play six, seven, six, eight guys to power forward, and it is it is not a disadvantage for you at all. Right. Uh, in fact, Coach K just said a while back that for us, LeBron can play the big. He can play the power forward, and we've already mentioned that Carmelo Anthony can ably play the four in, inter in international play. Uh, no question. Keep in mind that LeBron has a mid-range jump shot NBA style, but Prince will get three. Remember, LeBron is an inch shorter in the same weight as Carl Malone, who played power forward for many years. That's the kind of versatility. Yao Ming may be the one guy that they have to be concerned about, but remember, they can put great pressure on the China guards. This ought to be fun. Williams up ahead to Paul. Oh, and Paul with the sleight of hand, and it's Bosch to Williams. Four quick points for USA. And what about that pressure defense and one of your keys to the game? Well, that's important, and that's where you can play the two-point guards. And what I liked about Chris Paul is that he didn't look to pass it. The right play was to try to score, and he got to the rim. It's all USA here at quarter number two, but we're not done yet. Thirty nine point nine to go in the first half and coming up at halftime on the halftime report the Yankees and Pirates have pulled off a trade. We'll have the latest on the Brett Favre saga and is Sasha Vujicic staying put in Los Angeles or will he defect overseas? Zala Josh Childress you'll find out at the half and it is English underneath drawing the foul. Dari Noka will have the halftime coverage in just a little bit. Well, we mentioned the, uh, the defection of Josh Childress to the EuroLeague. Vujicic, Andres Bedrins of the Warriors mowing a deal to go over. So very interesting whether a trend is uh, starting to take place. You know, one of the things fans don't realize about international basketball is the, the, the agent's fee is paid by the club, and the club also usually pays the taxes. So when you sign a $21 million deal, that's all your money. 
Brandt coming up, red hot Cal pushes in search of his eighth Sprint Cup Series win at the sport's most famous track, the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series All-State 400 at the Brickyard on ESPN Sunday. Coverage begins at 1 p.m. Eastern with NASCAR Countdown. Kyle Busch drives so many cars. I'm gonna, I want, we're going to see him on a trike one of these days. Chris Boss from the baseline. Long. And a foul is called on Carl English. That is his third. 12.5 seconds to go in the first half. And Michael Red will go to the free throw line. One of two in this game from the stripe. He does have seven points. A couple of three-pointers. 73% shooting for USA Basketball. And what is up with Michael Red from the free throw line? You know, it, it, it should be getting used to that shorter international line, not the uh, free throw strike. A man from Ohio State. Here is Brempong. Ten seconds left, now under. Brempong drives and he's fouled by Chris Bosch. CB now 12 on USA Basketball, one of the block, but he got the foul. Brempong, one of those guys that plays over in uh, Europe, plays in Germany right now. Actually, one of the few Canadian players that did not play collegiately in the United States. It's the first. His hometown is Brampton, Ontario. Played in Germany last year and led his team in blocks. 6'8", 207, 27-year-old power forward. And he nails them both. Last shot time for USA. And it is Chris Paul to Darren Williams. Off the front rim, and the rebound comes to Canada. And that's the end of the first half here in Las Vegas. The United States, 61 points on 71% shooting. And for Canada, 38 points on 38% shooting. And let's head to Bristol right now for the halftime report. We'll see you again for the third quarter in just a little bit. Welcome back to the entertainment capital of the world, Las Vegas, Nevada. At the half, the United States 61, Canada 38. We're just about ready for the start of the third quarter. But first, we welcome you back courtside here at the Thomas and Mack Center in LV. Rick Hamill and the coach, Fran Fraschilla. And Fran, it is time for the Nike first half highlights. And it wasn't a total highlight fest. We have Dominique sitting right behind us. It wasn't the human highlight film all over again, but there were some good highlights. Here's one from Well, we talked We talked about the pressure defense. Kobe Bryant will be this team's perimeter stopper once they get to Beijing. There's a good example of the rip and the easy two. And then outside shooting, always a concern for Team USA because they will see zone in this Olympic tournament. Dwayne Wade knocks one down, and then I'm not sure if Kobe called that one, but the clock running down, good presence of mind. Kobe, four of five from the floor. Mello, five of nine from the floor. Wade hasn't missed. And time for the game track. Canada shooting 38%. The Americans, 71%. USA, 41 of their 61 points scored by the backcourt. And Wade and Anthony have combined for 24 points. That's your McDonald's game track. And Kobe Bryant, nine points. Michael Red off the bench, the leader in that realm with eight, the leader for Canada here at the half. Rowan Barrett, your good buddy, with eight points. Yeah, played at St. John's, a veteran. Team USA, Rick, with 10 turnovers that first half. If anything, they were almost too unselfish, trying to look for each other. And it's interesting because Mike Krzyzewski said earlier in the week, you don't select a team, you become a team. And this is the beginning of that last part of the winding road of three-year commitment. So some still kinks they need to work out, particularly on both ends of the floor. So we're underway in the third quarter. Kid, down low to Howard, and Dwight Howard is gobbled up, but a foul is called. Canada wants a jump ball, and Dwight Howard wants himself a couple of free throws. Dwight Howard, pretty quiet in that first half, just two points, three rebounds. But we'll see big Dwight at the line. Only 22 years old. I'm not sure he'll necessarily be a focal point offensively, and that's why I think early on, Mike Krzyzewski making sure he gets a touch. How about Joel Anthony not giving an inch and just trying his best to suffocate Dwight Howard right there? That was pretty impressive that, defensive play. You look at Michael Beasley, you look at a healthy Dwayne Wade, 
Sean Marion, Joel Anthony, who played, as we mentioned, a lot at the end of last season, and Eric Spolstra, his first year as a new Miami Heat coach. I saw him this week at uh, Team USA practices. Dwight Howard off the heel with that one and a lane violation on the United States called on Kobe. There's LeVon Kendall. Dwight Howard led the NBA in free throws attempted last season. Didn't shoot all that well, right around 60%, but did shoot 67% from the free throw line at the Tournament of the Americas last year. Kobe dogging Fuma Timmy, gets by him. Out of bounds, where are we going? It'll stay here, six on the shot clock for Canada. Uh, it's interesting, you mentioned Kobe, and you saw a little bit of the hand checking. They asked the FIBA officials this week, the players asked them, what can we get away with at international play? Because as you know, no hand checking right now in the NBA. That's LeVon Kendall's shot. He's a good elbow jump shooter, missed that one. Mello back for the U.S. Two-time All-Star goes in, can't score, just rims off for him. Mello fighting underneath, it's out of bounds. And it's out of bounds off of Joel Anthony. And Carmelo Anthony, he's fired up for this third quarter. Second quarter, all U.S., 31 to 14, the outscore candidate. Turned a relatively close game into a, well, a blowout here, a 23-point lead to start the third quarter. Well, this is what we expected, but remember, Team Canada, not the, not the level of competition they're going to see once they get to group play. In fact, Canada beaten by Croatia last week, relatively soundly, and only squeezed by a weak Korea team. And Rowan Barrett, he's into doubles with 10. He's looked good in this basketball game. Canada within 22. Mello for three. Way off with that shot. Here's Barrett. Carmelo Anthony shot 58% from three here in Vegas last summer. And now he's guarding Levon Kendall. You know, his one Achilles heel is on the defensive end, but Mello gives you so much in terms of international play because of his ability to be so versatile offensively. Anderson split the defense right there, out of bounds off of America, and it'll be two seconds on the shot clock for Canada. There is Carmelo. He'll be playing without Marcus Camby this year. I know he's not happy about that, but Stan Kroenke, the owner of the Denver Nuggets, had to make a move to save some cash. They were well into the luxury tax. And a hoist right there by Rowan Barrett. It's a miracle not answered. Wade, oh, they were trying a little all-star game play right there. Melo yeah. cleans up the mess. See, and I, you're not going to do that once you get to the point where you're playing Greece, Spain, and Argentina. That's what I mentioned earlier. Dwayne Wade's got the opportunity to go to the rim, take the two points, and it gets back to this team being maybe too unselfish at times. Jermaine Anderson, nice move to the hoop. He comes up wincing. You know, it's, it's interesting, you know, one of Mike Krzyzewski's big issues, as you see the block right there, is, you know, sometimes the more talented your team is, the harder it is actually to coach, but this team is very committed to playing together, accepting roles, guys that are leading scorers, obviously the great players in the league who can really put points on the board, deferring to each other, Kobe the defensive stopper, D. Wade the sixth man, LeBron the playmaker. Jess Young in for Canada. Joel Anthony will have a seat. So the communication and uh, camaraderie this week at practice was just off the charts. Wade caught up in the air, and it's a turnover. Barrett back for Canada. And you mentioned practice. Well, the unofficial count in terms of the senior team against the select team with seven wins for the senior team, three wins for the select team, and two ties. Not a bad showing from Kevin Durant and Kevin Martin. And Kobe Bryant, 4-3. Kevin Love and O.J. Mayo and all the young guys were probably going to be on uh, Team USA here coming up in the subsequent years. Very much so. In fact, one guy that uh, really impressed me was uh, Rodney Stuckey of the Pistons. Just a terrific couple days of practice. And they did not back down from from these guys you see right here Kobe out of the corner that's a mid-range jump shot uh, by his standards in the NBA gets three points for that but the young guys really took it seriously and you're exactly right Anderson nails the three in fact I talked to Jerry Colangelo before the game Rick and he said that 
he thinks that something positive has really started because of these guys making that three-year commitment. So be very interesting in 2012 as they head to London. Not only who the coach will be, but uh, the makeup of the team. And I think Jerry Colangelo needs to stay on for one more run. Barrett, oh, just in and out. Unlucky on that three-point attempt. Dwight Howard pulls down the rebound. We will see. See, that's just a little too sloppy right now. And it speaks to that unselfishness, trying to get everybody involved. Young and Howard were tangled up, and that fouls out Dwight Howard. And speaking of manager-director Jerry Colangelo, he said, and I quote, of all the things that have happened in my life, by the way, he's a Hall of Famer, this is potentially the crowning moment for me. This is the moment I've been waiting for. And, of course, he's talking about August 24th, gold medal game in Beijing. We all hope the United States are in that game. We all hope they win that game. Well, I, I can tell you, it, it's they are obviously the favorite. And... Uh, but it's not going to be easy. Yeah, I mentioned this two years ago when they played in the World Championship. This is a far better team and more prepared now. But Spain is outstanding. Argentina is outstanding. We talked about Greece, Lithuania. There you see Jerry Colangelo, I, the architect. And I mentioned, Rick, I don't think Coach K, there's no way he'll be back and make that three-year commitment. But I'd like to see Jerry Colangelo stay on through one more cycle. To create that continuity that's being built up right now by virtue of these three-year commitments. Branch Brempong was fouled. And coming up Thursday, USA Basketball continues on ESPN2, 8 a.m. Eastern Time. It's USA versus Turkey. And the next game coming up from Macau, it's Friday, 8 a.m. Eastern Time, the United States against Lithuania. USA Pre-Olympic Basketball right here on the ESPN family of networks. The subsequent four will all be on ESPN2. Three of them at 8 a.m. Eastern time. So if you're a night owl, set your DVR. Here's Wade with the miss. Mello puts it back in. Let's see, I like the fact that Dwayne Wade right there, no showtime. He went right at the rim. Barrett gets by Wade, and Wade picked his pocket. Oh, my goodness. Oh, and Wade is fouled by Jesse Young. And they may have an intentional foul. They do. Bill Kennedy yep. grabbed his forearm. That was a heck of a steal. I'm actually I'm a little <laughs> upset with Jesse Young right now because this was going to be a show from D. Wade. We were going to get a chance to really see how healthy this guy was on that jam. But you remember that international play. You see this a lot. A player. Well, that's a great steal. But a player will pick up a foul. And you see Jesse Young right away put his hand up. And actually, in the last two pre-Olympic events, the World Championships and then last year in the Turn of the Americas. Team USA started to do that as well on the defensive end where they would keep a player from getting a breakaway. You'll give up the foul to uh, eschew the opponent's highlight, if you will. Dwayne Wade hits them both, so it's two shots and the ball. So, you know, I don't like that foul. I, I understand you're trying to stop momentum. We're going to blow out here. I think you'll let Wade go at that point. And it's, it's two free throws and the ball. So, you know what I mean? If he I just understand. gets up the dunk, it's two points. Now you have a chance for a five-point possession. But, but you know what's important? Team USA has got to get used to this because that's how, that's how teams will play when it gets really serious. Right now, they're just messing around. Oh, Kobe messing around with a yep. fadeaway J right in your face. Kobe starting to feel it here in the third quarter. He's got 17. Well, Canada's now run out of gas, so it's... But it's important not for this to be showtime right now. A good wow. move. Yep. Branch Brempong hanging, going reverse and hitting. Best move of the day for Canada. See, there's got to be a little bit of playing oh, for the crowd. There we go. And there's uh, an example. But it's also got to be serious basketball. And when you talk about Chris Paul, as you mentioned earlier, Rick, the best in the league right now at making that play. To him, that's a high percentage play, yeah, though. You know, that's not a showboat play. That's just Chris Paul basketball. So you Dwight what? Howard makes no mistake when you get it up over the rim no, like this. They, these guys know. You take a look at Kobe now at the fadeaway. Good, solid defense. This is patented fadeaway move. But you're absolutely right. If you play with Chris Paul, you've got to play with both eyes on the ball at all times. 
Nice take by Jesse Young right at Carlos Boozer, the bucket for Canada. Chris Paul, nice feed. Carmelo hanging, and he's fouled. Chris Paul. And Team USA flexing here at quarter number three. All U.S. players have scored except Jason Kidd. Of course, he's the distributor. USA 76, Canada 49. We step aside, but we'll be back in a second. And we bring you back patriotically here at the Thomas and Mack Center in Las Vegas. The United States Air Force Command is currently stationed at Nellis Air Force Base are getting their just due. The sellout crowd here at the Thomas and Mack Center letting these gentlemen and these ladies hear it. And we appreciate what they do, no doubt about it. Rick Campbell, Fran Priscilla on the call for ESPN here, the first exhibition game for USA. And last year, Rick, if you remember, Mike Krzyzewski brought a, a couple of wounded warriors to, to meet with the team prior to the start of practice. And what they did was they talked about selfless service, something that's a tenant of, uh, of the military, and uh, brought a tear to everybody in that room's eyes, guys that had been wounded in, uh, in the war in Iraq that still want to go back and defend their country. And there's a lot of pride on that USA bench right now for obvious reasons. And you've got quite the gig coming up after our gig here with ESPN and ESPN2. We're calling all five of these pre-Olympic games. What do you have going on? For well, I'm going to be heading back to the Persian Gulf on August 5th uh, with Operation Hardwood, a bunch of college coaches who uh, give a week of their time to spend time with the troops and actually coach the troops on the various military bases. Always looking forward to that assignment. And here is what is coming up on the pre-Olympic tour. Turkey on July 31st on ESPN2. August 1st, it's Lithuania. On the 3rd, it's a game against Russia. And on the 5th of August, a friendly against our friends from Australia. All games on ESPN2, three of the four at 8 a.m. Eastern time. I mentioned a sellout a moment ago. I'll give you the number, 18498. And props to all these great people out here in Las Vegas for showing up for the last game on American soil for this USA basketball team before they head to China on the road to redemption. They won gold back in 2000 at the Sydney Olympics, then sixth at the 2002 World Championship, third at the 04 Olympics, third at the 2006 World Championship, and the USA just doesn't roll like that, Fran. No, times have changed. Times have changed. You go back to 1992, and Chuck Daly did not have to call a timeout during that entire <laughs> Olympic run. And Chuck Daly sitting one row behind us. That's not unlike Will Chamberlain never fouling out of a game. I mean, that's just an unbelievable stat. Darren Williams strong to the cup, and he scores right in the face of Rance Brimpaw. We mentioned during the break that I would not be surprised if, if Jason Kidd takes a back seat as they get closer to Olympic play because Williams and Paul, particularly fresh legs, and you saw Williams' strength on that last play, the ability to get to the rim. Look up, get in, Michael. And we've seen a lot of Paul and Williams on the court together, right from the corner. That guy never misses. Michael Red hits again. The designated shooter, when you're playing with two point guards, you always keep your head up in transition. Three for three from three point range for Red. He has 11 points. A yeah, little pick and roll defense right there. Something that Team USA obviously has worked on the last couple of years. Tayshaw Prince said of that as we take a look at Darren Williams with a statement drive. He says, we have a lot of bigs. And that's going to help us clamp down on the pick and roll and not cause as many problems uh, as they normally would. And that's talking about the opponent. And Tayshaun says the key is stopping the ball. And pick and roll obviously has been a problem in terms of the losses suffered by USA in recent competitions. Well, it was. And you know the interesting about pick and roll, interesting thing about pick and roll basketball from a coach's point of view, there's a split second when a screener screens for the ball where there's some indecision. And when you have the versatility that Team USA has on the perimeter, you can switch a lot of those ball screens. It makes it a little bit easier. But uh, certainly a point of emphasis, I think, the last two training camps. I want to get back to that point in a, yep. in a second, but I mean, how can I talk over Michael Red just drilling threes at will here in Vegas? Four of four from downtown and a violation over and back style by Carl English. And he keeps Chris Paul from taking the ball. I know Paul, well, the he... feisty competitor he is, isn't cool with that at all. 
Well, the ball movement now is with a purpose. Early in this game, I thought it was a little sloppy. And right now, Team USA's ball movement outstanding. You see they're working red off screens. Oh, my. He should have taken that one from pro range. Here's Darren Williams. Nice little up fake. Back to ball. He'll shoot a three. And he'll hit that three. Another. He's raining out of the sky yep. here. That's a huge area of improvement for Chris Paul. You mentioned it. 37% from that NBA arc. This is a chip shot, really, the international line. And that makes his dribbling ability even better. English. Boozer can't control that rebound. Rempong into Jesse Young. A reload for Canada. Boozer gets this one. CP 13 back for USA. Michael Red. This is more his range. And he was short on it. And the foul call on Jesse Young. Defending Tayshawn Prince. Hey, Red Hot Kyle Bush is in search of his eighth Sprint Cup Series win at the sport's most famous track, the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series, All State 400 at the Brickyard on ESPN Sunday. Coverage begins at 1 p.m. Eastern with NASCAR Countdown. Back to the pick and roll thing for a second. Jason Kidd said, in the past, that's something that's hurt us. We haven't communicated as well as we should have. Well, and that's because they, you can't put all-star teams together and we've proven it now and expect to beat some of these elite international teams without some cohesiveness that takes place in practice every day. That was a big point of emphasis in the workouts this week. You see the Canadian bigs giving some trouble to the United States bigs, Bosch, Boozer, Howard. They just haven't been able to dominate down low. Brempong and Young and Joel Anthony, they've done a nice job for Canada. Well, I don't think this team's going to get a lot of scoring down low, Team USA. It's going to come off the drives, but it's going to be a perimeter-oriented and fast-break type club. Jermaine Anderson with 14. He's been looking good for Canada. Here's Darren Williams. Faking Kendall out to Prince. That's a long two, and it's yeah. good. Hey, that's international basketball right there. Something that this team has gotten better and better at. The drive and the dish, the kick out. That's what I mean by saying the game is played from outside in. You collapse the defense off the drive from the perimeter, and that will open up that three-point line. Yeah, you see the switch the out. Yes. Yep. English had nowhere to go. Brempong with three on the shot clock. Denied by Tayshawn Prince. Trademark defense by the Palace Prince here at the Thomas and Mack. And it's Paul to Darren Williams. Rebound, Brempong. Well, you saw the ability of Chris Bosch that last possession to move his feet so well and get out on that ball screen. Brown's had it taken away. Paul to Darren Williams. Oh, look at the fakes. Oh, he's zigging and sagging, and Jermaine Anderson has no clue. He's been watching Manu Ginobili right there, the sidestep. The Euro step. That's the Euro step right there. Good move by the young man from Dallas. Two Dallas natives on this roster, Bosch and Williams. Williams into doubles with 10. 34 to 8. Points off turnovers in favor of guess who? Here's Michael Red. And the U.S. will set up. See, I think in this third quarter, Rick, much more of a sense of purpose. First quarter, second quarter, just trying to get the kinks out. Very impressive. Some of the crowd getting to their feet as CP3 puts on a dazzling move at the end of the third quarter. Oh, what a move by Chris Paul. 17 to 2 run to end the third for USA basketball. And LeBron James, the first one out to meet his dudes and tell them they're doing great here at the Thomas and Mack. First exhibition game, first to five for USA. The first quarter, eh, second and third have been superb. From Team USA, well, they're here from Canada as well, but it's been all USA the last two quarters. We got the fourth coming up, 10 more minutes of highlights. Why would you go anywhere? Welcome back to Las Vegas, Nevada. It is the 2008 State Farm USA Basketball Challenge at the Thomas and Mack Center in Las Vegas. USA killing Canada 95-56. And time now for tonight's Gatorade Cooler Talk. And we want to show you the rundown 
of the games coming up in the Olympics. We've been showing you the schedule for the pre-Olympic schedule. This is who the USA will face, starting with the host team, China, on August 10th. Well, none of that really matters. They are in the toughest bracket. Uh, Spain, Greece, US, probably three of the four best teams in the world right now. But as anybody who knows international competition knows, nothing matters until you get to the one and done quarterfinals. So don't get too excited by what they do in pool play, in group play, because it will be meaningless. The top four teams in each of the two groups will advance to the quarterfinals. Oh, Dwayne Wade needed a couple of more jets on that leap. Just couldn't get there. We mentioned how well Paul and Williams played together. I think they're going to be a very important part of the run to the gold because they can both score. Kendall saw the lane open up, went in, couldn't pack it down. Kobe back for USA. Kobe keeping the dribble alive. Slithers through, feeds Bosch, who goes glass and misses. Carmelo Anthony had it taken away nicely by English. Carl English spent a couple of years in the D League, and he's going to the free throw line. Foul on Kobe Bryant, and a good opportunity here, Fran, to take a look at your projected gold, silver, and bronze in the upcoming Beijing Olympics. Well, I, I, think, I think that you watch, watch as uh, English goes right at Kobe's body. That's a great job right there by the veteran. European player, but in my opinion, obviously, I think USA will win the gold, but I think they will play Spain in the gold medal game, and it's going to be a much closer game than people realize. Spain playing very well right now. I think Greece will beat an Argentina team that has been so good for so long, but is slightly on the downhill. The injury to Ginobili, no Pepe Sanchez. He is not playing in international play anymore. Oberto has had a long season. Greece, again, is a team, Rick, as we've talked about, does not have a recognizable name, but a very talented club. And I talked to Eric Musselman today, the former coach of the Kings, who saw Greece last week, and he was very impressed with their ball movement. But Spain's got Gasol and a lot of quality, rising young NBA players. I tell you what, Jermaine Anderson has that teardrop down pat. That's been going for him the whole game. 16 points now for him. You're a small player. You've got to have that ability to shoot that ball in the what I call the high paint area before you can get the shot blocker to have an impact on it. Jermaine Anderson, 25 years old. 9.1 PPG in last year's Tournament of the Americas. Currently playing in Germany in their Pro A League. Nice feed by Anderson down to Anthony. And the baby Jay won't go. Rebound taken by Chris Bosch. And it's Kidd up ahead to Carmelo. Great and he is stamped by LeVon Kendall and fouled in the process. Great look by Jay Kidd. Carmelo doing a terrific job of running the floor. We mentioned his versatility. Anthony with the ability to score inside with power. Can shoot the three and great court vision. That's something that uh, uh, NBA announcers have probably said thousands of times in the career of Jason Kidd, the oldest player on his team. That was Brady to Moss right there, <laughs> over the linebackers, under the safety. That was a beautiful pass by Jason Kidd, who yeah. <laughs> ironically and surprisingly did not lead USA Basketball in assists last year at the Tournament of the Americas. LeBron, LeBron James, yeah. 4.7 dimes per game. Kidd right behind him at 4.6. You know, it's funny, LeBron made the statement that one of the things he talked about is, you know, when we play on our NBA teams, we all say that we wish we could play with this guy or that guy. And now they're getting a chance to play with the best players in the NBA. And I think they relish this opportunity. Starting to chant USA a little bit here at the Thomas and Mack. Mello now with 20 points. He is the leading scorer in the game. Jermaine Anderson leads Canada with 18. 97-58 USA over Canada when they met last year at the TOA. The U.S. won by 50 in a game that mattered. Well, in this game, we talk, we said from the top, this was going to be a blowout. Canada hung in there for a while, but Canada not an elite club right now on the international scene. Kid to Mello. Back to Boss. Oh, that was beautiful. The play of the game. Now, Three Americans collaborate on a beautiful deuce. Now that's where Mello looked like Randy Moss. And a great feed right behind him, knowing he was going out of bounds. Wow. 
That sent a charge into this arena. And here we go again. Dwayne Wade. Oh, with the Mega Blast windmill style. Woohoo! And the bench loving that. So is the crowd here at the Thomas and Mack, the sellout crowd on its feet. Dwayne Wade is officially back. back. Woo. All right, the PA, announce, the PA announcer here in Vegas just gave you a woo. And here's another look at the play of the game. Kid, to Mello, to Bosch, and USA all over Canada. In France. Welcome back to Glitzy Las Vegas. Rick Kamla, Fran Priscilla on the call for ESPN. The crowd's still buzzing here in Vegas. 101 58 Americans over Canadians. A couple of sexy highlights sent us to break. English trying to split that double. And some of the bench players for Canada into the game. That was Aaron Dornicamp missing the shot from the corner. Kobe Bryant crosses over English, and he's fouled by English. And those two dudes have been going at it the whole game. <laughs> they have. And Kobe relishes that. And so I think does English. Carl English does too. You're right. Very good score at Hawaii. Took uh, the Rainbows to a number of NCAA tournaments under Rob Riley Wallace. And he was in Seattle's training camp, and he got very close to Ray Allen. Ray Allen was a, a, a mentor to Carl English. And uh, while he was in their training camp, and Unfortunately, has not been able to stick with the team, but they're very successful now in Europe. Kobe, one out of two from the line. 102.58 USA. Carl English averaged 19.6 as a senior at Hawaii. Currently playing for Gran Canaria in Spain. Sounds like a lovely place to play basketball. I would basketball. think it is. Yes, it is. English Probably puts the double team and draws the foul. Guaranteed he's got a villa on the uh, ocean. Well, you can tell by the tan. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny. We were talking about this off the air. Jay Triano, the former national team coach of Canada and a very highly respected assistant coach of the Toronto Raptors, has been the international coach, if you will, for Team USA. He has talked to the team and also guided the select team into how international basketball is played. As English knocks down another one, but uh, Jay, one of the quality guys in the NBA, and I know the players really enjoyed what he had to teach them about international basketball this year. Loose ball taken by Wade. Here's Bosch plus contact. I heard a tweet. It's CB12 to the line. And ironically, Jay Triano, very close to this guy, Chris Bosch. Highly successful member of the Raptors. Chris Bosch, three-time All-Star. He started the last two. Good strength right there to stay with it. Bosch last year averaged 22.3 points per game. The rebounds were down a little bit to 8.7. He is a 2010 guy. He's still a very young player. I mean, you look at Chris Bosch and Dwight Howard. And I really think some of these guys are going to be back and play in 012. You know, it's interesting, Rick. You talk about the 92 team. Charles Barkley and uh, Carl Malone, John Stockton, and Scottie Pippen all represented the United States in 96. So they didn't just do it once with the Dream Team. They did it one more time, and I think you'll see some of these young players on Team USA play in one more Olympics. Who has a better smile in the NBA right now than that man? Dwight Howard. He's an infectious, charismatic personality. Tell that to his opponents. They would not agree. From the corner. That shot no good. Look at that. Up high, it's Mello. He tipped it, couldn't dunk it. Wade going to drive, going to pull up, going to hit it. Dwayne Wade in full effect here in Las Vegas. Dwayne Wade, Anthony, Bryant have spent a lot of time this week at practice working on that mid-range jumper. 20 points for Wade, 20 points for Mello, 15 for Kobe. They're the leaders for USA. We mentioned, Rick, that teams as they get to uh, Beijing will play a lot of zone defense and force that outside shot. Kendall fouled on the drive. Bill Kendall with a healthy smile as he delivers that call to the scorer's table. And a look at Mike Krzyzewski. 28 years at Duke. 
And he does have an NCAA record on his resume. Nine seasons of 30 or more wins. No coach in NCAA history has ever done that other than him. Kobe Bryant has mentioned on many occasions that had he chosen to go to college, that most likely he would have gone to Duke University to play for Coach K. So he came in, I think, uh, players had a very healthy respect for Mike Krzyzewski from the get-go. Of course, his staff, Jim Beheim and Nate McMillan, Mike D'Antoni, the new coach of the Knicks. Talk about a brain trust. Jim Beheim, the zone guy. It's like a brain vault. <laughs> well, D'Antoni's had a lot to do with the offensive uh, flow in practice. Look at that rebound by Dwight Howard and a foul on Canada. Foul call underneath. Jermaine Buckner down there. Doing work. He's a small. Dwight Howard is <clears throat> a big. 505 to go in the basketball game. Again, last game on American soil for USA basketball. They will fly out of Las Vegas on Saturday night. They're heading to Macau, then off to Shanghai, and then off to Beijing. Kobe Bryant. Had it taken away. Carl English has hung in there with Bryant. English going up. Oh, and Kobe Bryant is upset that Darren Williams, and I guarantee you this, Darren Williams knocked that away, but Kobe Bryant <laughs> wanted to reject Carl English right there. I promise you that. You, you think he wanted to have a meeting at the rim? They wanted to, he wanted, they've been jawing the whole game. Yep. Yeah. And interesting, after, after, uh, you see Kobe right here, after English goes back and gets back up, Kobe pats him on the head. As if to say, you know what, I'm enjoying this tonight. Kobe appreciates the competitiveness. English has not backed down. You know, what? what is he, 1-100th the talent of Kobe Bryant? But the guy's hanging in there. Kobe Bryant, his day likely done, 4.52 to go. He checks out with 15 points, three rebounds, three assists, six of 10 shooting. A comfy win and a friendly for USA. Here's Tayshawn on the move. Dwight Howard throws it down. And he took a little bit off the fastball on that one. That wasn't the full Monty from Big Dwight. Uh, Jermaine Buckner at Richmond was a small forward, and he has to contend right now with 260 pounds worth of Dwight Howard. English now working against Tayshawn. Have fun with that. Almost got an and one out of it. English is showing you why he was Canada's second leading scorer last year at the Tournament of the Americas at 10.1 PPG. When Canada has been good in the past, as you see the dunk from Howard, it's been guys like Carl English. You mentioned at the top the uh, the issue with Samuel Dallenbert from the 76 ers was sent home from Greece. Jamal McGlure no longer plays. Steve Nash gave Team Canada a good decade plus of solid basketball, but guys like Carl English, you can rebuild this Canadian program around. They finished sixth in, seventh in the Olympics in 2000, did not qualify in 04. 17th in the current FIBA World Ranking. It'll probably go down now that Samuel Dalbert is no longer on the team. Steve Nash officially done. He's been officially done for a few years, but they keep tugging at him. Steve, come back, come back. He is done with international competition. Spent a lot of years with the Canadian national team, and they had some success with Steve Nash. Well, they did. I, I, I won't tell you who told me the story, but back in 2000 in Sydney, you know, the Canadian basketball program is not flush with cash, and I'm sure Steve Nash wouldn't be excited for me to get this story out there. But he, <laughs> Tell he, it anyway. He, he slipped an envelope under every door of his teammates in Sydney with just, a, let's just say, a little extra loose change to uh, take care of his teammates so they could have some spending money in Sydney. Steve Nash, 99 games played for the Canadian national team in the 2000 Olympics, last gold for USA. Canada finished seventh, and he was the MVP of the FIBA Americas Championship in 2003. Of course, Nash, two-time MVP, four-time NBA All-Star. English hits the baseline. Oh, English. Jay. He's trying to get, on his, get himself an invite to a uh, NBA camp in the fall. And Nash went out on top, Fran. That was his last international competition with Canada. It was back in 03. He averaged 11 points, 6.6 .6 assists. Not fantastic stats, but 
just being the leader on the floor and Carl English has committed his fifth foul his day is done 11 points three of eight from the floor. Well, it's a good point you say fifth foul because five fouls in international play so if you're Team USA with the lack of depth inside that's probably one of the minor concerns about not having that extra big man on the roster. Darren Williams at the stripe one of six American players in double figures. Wade Mello 20 Kobe 15 Red 14. Paul with 11 and Darren Williams off that miss stuck on 12. Rebound comes out to Chris Paul. Darren Williams on the move off glass it goes. He just uh, makes it look easy doesn't he. Well and I think they've worn out Canada right now. We've been in garbage time for a while but still a sense of purpose on the part of Team USA but you really can't get excited if you're going to follow this team all the way through until you get to the quarterfinals when it becomes a one and done tournament for everybody involved. So you enjoy them playing against Yao and Dirk Nowitzki. Certainly the rematch with Greece in the uh, group play but nothing really matters. Oh, Dwight couldn't find the handle. Loose change comes to Famatimi. He's back for Canada. You know, speaking of Team USA, Doug Collins spoke to the team this morning, and I talked to some people who were there and said it was a very moving talk. Doug Collins, of course, on that 72 team that did not win the gold. And uh, the controversial finish with the Soviet Union was fouled late in the game, made the two free throws. Red. Caution flammable. Michael Red said this week that that line is so short, it's not a leg shot, it's almost a touch shot for him. I don't think the average fan realizes how deep the NBA three is. Always remember and don't forget Red Hot Kyle Busch is in search of his eighth Sprint Cup Series win at the sport's most famous track, the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series All-State 400 at the Brickyard on Sunday on ESPN. Coverage begins at 1 p.m. Eastern time with NASCAR Countdown. Carlos Boozer had somewhere to go, but he forgot his luggage. Out of bounds off of Booz. He's been quiet in this game. It's interesting Rick you know I mentioned uh, Spain and you say why is Spain good. Well obviously they have Paul Gasol and they have one of the underrated guards in the NBA and Jose Calderon. But then you add Mark Gasol with a lot of international experience Garbajosa the young star Rudy Fernandez who will play with the Blazers this year. And then Ricky Rubio only 17 years old one of the youngest players you'll see in Olympic basketball history and potentially potentially one of the top picks in next year's NBA draft. Darren Williams and Team USA putting on a show here in Las Vegas. 159 to go. The show isn't over yet. ESPN's presentation of USA Basketball brought to you by McDonald's and State Farm, where great coverage meets great rates. With the score 115 65 USA over Canada we welcome you back to the entertainment capital of the world and it's time now for the sprite play of the game er plays of the game there have been so many highlights out here this is one of them you're going to see Wade in a second. Well both of these epitomize what people have seen tonight who have come out to watch this team the unselfishness and then a little bit of the razzle dazzle there by Dwayne Bay Wade who looks pretty healthy. And right behind us, Dominique Wilkins, the human highlight film. And he was loving that jam by Dwayne Wade. So were we. Hope you were as well. Michael Red, five of seven from the floor, all three pointers. He has 17. And he hits again. He has 20 points in this basketball game. Six of eight from three. Now three Americans with exactly 20. Red, Wade, and Mello. When you talk about Red, Carmelo Anthony, and Kobe Bryant, they will be the primarily primary outside shooters. For Team USA. Oh, look at that defense by Carlos Buzer. Carlos Buzer denying Brempong right there. Beautiful defensive play. Here's Prince from the corner. Hey, how about the small lineup tonight? Both Williams and Paul have been on the court basically for the majority of the night together. They've been outstanding. 
Jesse Young threw it to his coach, Leo Rottens, and Leo doesn't look happy. Well, Leo could knock that shot down during his uh, career, but uh, not right now. 24 turnovers for Rottens' Canadian team. Williams down to Boozer. Oh, the buttery touch by Carlos Boozer, his first field goal of the game. He has four points and three boards. Uh, Boozer, one of those four American players, along with Wade, James, and uh, Carmelo Anthony, who tasted the bitterness of 2004. Bombacimi trying to make a play. Boozer with the rebound. Chris Paul has Tayshaun on the left. Good balance by Canada. Darren Williams triggers. Rebound to Young. We're under a minute to go. 120, 65, the Americans over Canada. Rick, this is a good start. You can tell the chemistry is there. The defense has been pretty solid, but you can't get too excited right away. Jesse Young with the miss. If you're going to follow Team USA through the Olympics, there are going to be three or four very interesting contests. And there'll be one or two games that may actually be nail biters into the second half. Under 10 seconds to go, the shot clock is off. Jermaine Anderson gobbled up by Boozer and Paul, and isn't that the way it should end with a turnover by Canada? Brought out by fantastic defense by the U.S. 25 turnovers for Canada, 43 American points off of those, and we are done in Las Vegas, the last game on American soil before USA basketball shoves off for China is in the books. A 55-point win for USA over Canada. Impressive team chemistry. The defense was solid. The outside shooting was pretty solid. Still some work to be done. They'll get better and better. As I mentioned Hope earlier, it'll be an interesting uh, Olympics. It won't be easy. For Fran Fraschilla and our tyrant ESPN crew, I'm Rick Campbell signing off from Vegas. You've been watching the 2008 State Farm USA Basketball Challenge. Baseball tonight is next. We'll see you soon, everybody.